And it reminds me that uh, on the first space shuttle mission, when Young and Crippen were up there, uh, Young, looking at the view of the Earth that he had for the first time in that uh, way, said a uh, little bit of this could last you for about <laughs> six months. Uh, all right, so the, both men have to get out of their seat. They have to get into position for the opening of the door. And it's probably worth pointing out here that if they don't get that door open, they've got a major problem because too much heat will build up in the capsule and uh, they might have to go back into the unit uh, in, uh, and actually have to work with that. Is that true? Uh, it, partially true. Actually, if we could not open them, we'd think twice about staying for very long. Right. We'd come home and fix it. They're, we're confident enough of the doors now that we're not going to do it deliberately like we did the first time. No, we're going to basically do it automatically. Right. Again, when uh, Young and uh, Crippen were up, uh, the payload, payload doors, they said, kind of hesitated before they opened fully, and it was Crippen who said he was mighty glad to see the doors go ahead and open smoothly because he didn't particularly care about the thought of going outside and trying to do anything associated with them. So we'll be waiting for that to come up, and uh, we'll also have some information for you on what's inside the cargo bay, the payload for this mission, the first scientific payload. And we'll continue our coverage of the Space Shuttle Columbia uh, in just a moment. Since child-resistant caps were introduced, poisoning deaths of kids by protected... Last year, America produced more rookie burglars and cops. I know. I used to be a burglar. Today, it's my job to stop them. And I use a BSR system X10. Just plug it in, and the X10 automatically controls your lights and appliances, so it always looks and sounds like someone's home. And no burglar wants to rob a house when someone's there. Either we need a lot more cops or a lot more BSR system X10s. Available at Crazy Eddie's. LJ Radio Rock. And it's working. Sharing a ride or using public transportation once in a while can help us save even more. So keep it up, America. And continuing our coverage of the second launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia. It is now in orbit. It is almost completing its first orbit, in fact. And it's getting about ready time for the payload bay door opening exercise, a very critical maneuver that's going to take place here. We have a simulator of the uh, mock-up, in fact, of the uh, Space uh, Shuttle at building number nine here at Houston. And uh, it gives us a view of exactly how the doors will look when they're opened up, the payload bay doors, but of course this time we have a scientific mission involved and we have a cargo in the payload bay doors. Lynn Schur has uh, been investigating exactly what went into this mission in terms of the cargo and the payload bay door and she explains to us now what's in there and how it's going to be used. How does lightning affect the intensity of thunderstorms? How much water do dwarf sunflowers need to grow in zero gravity? Where is the ocean its greenest and thus best for fishing? To find answers to some of these questions, NASA's OSTA-1, the Office of Space and Terrestrial Applications, is sending seven experiments on board the shuttle. OSTA's $11 million experimental package is one of the most important aspects of Columbia's second mission. Most of the experiments were specifically selected because of their need to face the Earth. This is a model of five of the experiments, and it will be mounted inside the payload bay of the orbiter, just like that. And since the Columbia will be orbiting in this attitude for 88 hours of the mission, 
the experiments will have plenty of time to collect their data from the Earth. The most elaborate will use a 30-foot antenna looking out the side of the orbiter to create a topographical map of certain land areas. A related project will look straight down to identify certain rock types that could indicate hidden mineral and petroleum deposits. Like almost all the OSTA-1 experiments, these will be controlled by ground personnel in Houston, and they're more concerned with working out methods of gathering data than with actual practical results. The ocean color experiment will detect algae-produced chlorophyll on the surface of the seas as a means of determining environmental conditions and concentration of food fish. Another experiment will collect data on the amount of carbon monoxide polluting the atmosphere. And there's even one that will try to develop a sensor that can distinguish between various features, the difference between snow and clouds, for instance. While those five experiments are located back here in the Cargo Bay area, two others are located in the front of the craft with the astronauts. Containers like these will hold seeds of dwarf sunflower plants with varying amounts of water in each to determine the best soil moisture for growth in zero gravity. And finally, in the only experiment to be performed by the astronauts themselves, this camera will photograph lightning by day and by night to try to determine how electrical discharges affect the violence of a storm and to determine lightning's role in predicting severe weather conditions. Like all the experiments, it's a milestone for space scientists. So now what you're looking at is the payload bay arm that's going to be activated not at this first test of the door opening, but later in the mission it's going to be uh, given a test workout. Uh, Joe Allen, this is something that uh, the pilot, as I understand it, actually is the operator and uh, has a great deal to do with this. In, indeed he does. The, the robot arm is in many ways a robot, but it's in other ways an extension of the arm of the person that's working the controls. How much uh, practice time is going into the operation of that arm? A great deal of practice now, although as, as we learn to use it, I think it will require less and less because it does react uh, almost as one right. one's own arm might react. Well, it almost makes you think of these video games. Are you talking about buttons you push? The, uh, push button one and it uh, moves up and right? Or Steve, I think it's uh, fair to say that the best training for future astronauts might be the video games as opposed to <laughs> learning to fly airplanes. But the arm then will be given a test on this mission uh, not to actually go out as, and reach outside, uh, as I understand it, but what will be the limitation on the test? It, it will reach uh, around uh, in, in many places. I'm not sure how I, much. I, I guess it'll reach outside, but they didn't yes. want to uh, latch it on to anything. We're a little bit, not, bit uh, afraid to exercise the fingers, right. so to speak, too much right now. We uh, will practice moving the arm, and the next, the next flight we, we will go up to something and grab a hold of it. So we're coming up now in less than 20 minutes on the uh, first opening of the payload door test. And uh, as we've said, this is a critical maneuver. We've got to get those payload bay doors open in order to let the radiators out. These are radiators that are necessary to give off the heat that builds up that's generated inside the spacecraft from all the multiplicity of equipment in there as well as the... Uh, heat that comes from the sun on one side. That's an interesting thing that we haven't talked about, the, the temperature here. Uh, you've got a vastly different set of temperatures uh, on one side of the spacecraft as opposed to the other. Uh, correct. We tend to think uh, in terms of temperatures here on Earth, what's the temperature of the air? There is no air in orbit, and so temperature has a bit different sort of meaning. It's, it's very hot on one side of the spacecraft where the sun's shining. It can be very cold on the other side. So what do you do? Uh, do you leave the same side of the spacecraft in the well, uh, heat we, all the time? Well, if we want that side warm, we can certainly do that. In this case, the, the orbiter is going around the Earth. It's looking down at the Earth. So the, those doors are pointed down towards That's Earth, and the, the crew can look out over their, from their overhead windows, in right. other words, above them, in a manner of speaking, and see Earth below. And it will be their first really spectacular view of the mission. Uh, before he took off, Richard Truly uh, talked about the mechanical arm that is going to get its first test uh, that was, in fact, built by the Canadians. And uh, he is the man who's going to be in charge of operating it on this mission. The arm is attached to the orbiter uh, just outside this window and on the port side longeron. Uh, it has uh, 
two joints, or by joint I mean a, a freedom of movement in the shoulder. One we call shoulder pitch, and the other one shoulder yaw. Moving out from the shoulder to what we call the elbow joint, there is one, uh, one joint in the elbow, which is elbow pitch. Moving out to the wrist, we have three joints. One is uh, wrist roll, wrist pitch, and wrist yaw. So the combination of shoulder pitch, shoulder yaw, elbow pitch, wrist yaw, wrist pitch, and wrist roll make it just like your arm. It, it can reach into the far reaches of the payload bay and eventually will to uh, grapple a payload and uh, uh, remove it and put it into space or to uh, retrieve a payload or satellite, say, that's uh, been broken uh, that we'd like to uh, retrieve, bring home, and uh, fix it and save ourselves a lot of money.